First, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. This is Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. I want to pull that up. That is our live look from Seaside right there. Rain is starting to hit my camera. So you mean that's uh, that means that's probably heading our way. And you can see it's pretty windy. But I wanted to point this out because if you go directly right of this camera, head out into the ocean about 300 miles, you're going to run into a volcano called the Axial Seamount. Somewhere out there. Don't, don't quote me exactly on the distance. But it is out there. And we're going to be talking about that during this segment. Again, this is Fox 12 Now. We cover a wide range of topics here. We're live streaming from the Fox 12 Oregon newsroom, so thanks for joining us. You can find all of our segments on our YouTube channel at kptv.com and on the Fox 12 apps, which are on any device that you have. But yes, this is kind of some ongoing coverage that we do have about this, about the Axial Seamount out there in the Pacific Ocean. This volcano, there is a prediction that it is going to erupt in 2025, as it has, it has done uh, recently on other occasions. But we're going to be discussing discussing that, and in particular, how that volcano is being monitored, which is pretty incredible. And to do so, we're joined right now by Deb Kelly, the director of the Regional Cabled Array. There are a lot of acronyms associated with this, so I'm not going to go into all of them. Uh, but Deb, thank you for joining us and, and being here with us today. No, thank you. It's my pleasure. Um, I want to give everybody a basic understanding of uh, before we get into the actual seamount and all of that, talking about the regional cabled array, which is really a pretty incredible technological achievement. Can you tell us what that is and what the organization does? Sure. So it's uh, funded by the National Science Foundation. It's basically the largest underwater observatory in the world. Uh, it focuses on really critical things happening off our coast. So underwater eruptions, uh, ocean acidification, earthquakes, obviously, very interested in the earthquakes that are going there. And so NSF funded this um, hopefully for 25 to 30 years. Uh, and it's a, a very large observatory. It basically brings the internet and power into the oceans. So for before 2014, people would put instruments down with batteries. And the sea is a tough place to work. And you'd put them down for a year. And maybe they would work. Maybe they wouldn't, right? But you wouldn't know. So this what this does is it uses uh, high power and bandwidth submarine fiber optic cables the same cables that most of our data, phone calls, everything in the world goes underwater now on these cables. Um, there's thousands and thousands of miles of them. And so what uh, we did is we installed this um, this underwater observing system. The, it runs out to Axial. There, we have two different legs. There's over 150 instruments of all different kinds. So it's meant to look at how biological changes happen when there's heat waves in the ocean, big storms, a lot of the major processes that operate in the ocean, this, this cable array is focused on working on. And one of the really transformational things is not only the data and all instruments are full out, um, but all the data is public. So anybody in the world can see them. That's, and it's live I'm, data because it's a cable, yeah. Yeah, live data coming from that. So when you're talking about the, the cable that's run out there, just to, again for, an understanding of that. How many miles of cable is that out there to, to where you're There's um, over 500 miles of cable. And so Axial Seamount's about 300 miles offshore. So one of the fibers uh, cables runs right out to that, now up to the summit of the volcano where there's underwater hot springs and where a lot of the uh, important activity takes place. And this is, as you mentioned, live data, live interaction with that. You can get that instant feedback and know what's going on out there. And um, you mentioned the biological aspect and everything else that you're monitoring. So a lot of different things that you're able to do with that, with all of the different equipment that's out there. Uh, just to, to talk about the volcano uh, in particular, so the axial seamount, in case people are unaware of, about this and uh, specifically just that geographic region where it's located, could you give everybody just an overview of axial seamount and, and what yeah, the volcano is? So um, it's about an hour and a half or day and a half steam from Seattle on the ship. It's located where the tectonic plates are spreading apart. Um, it's called the Juan de Fuca Ridge, and these um, they're called mid-ocean ridges, and it's where 75% of the volcanism on Earth occurs, but it's underwater. Uh, and so the volcano is sitting right on top of a place where there's lots of magma melt coming up from uh, the subsurface. And it's the most, we chose this to instrument because it's the most active volcano off our coast. It's located about a mile down, uh, and it has many active hydrothermal systems, and it's incredibly dynamic with really amazing animals. Some of the most extreme environments on Earth are hosted on this on this volcano. 
And uh, you mentioned the, the one to Fuca Blade and also that, you know, you, you can monitor earthquakes as well as the volcano. And for clarification for everybody, is this volcano located at that inter intersection where essentially the big one, you know, everybody in the Northwest knows what the big one is. Is this located at that location or is this a separate? No, this is separate. So at, at where the volcano is, is you can think of the building blocks on the planet as kind of a big jigsaw puzzle. And ours are where the plates are spreading apart. Um, and the Cascadia subduction zone is where the Pacific plate dives underneath the, the North American plate. And that's why we have the Cascade volcano. So it's a very different system. Yeah. And, it, and it's, it's much more active volcanically too. And so uh, as it's spreading apart there, and so this being the most active volcano off of our coast, what type of volcano is this as far as, I guess, what type of volcano is this? And when it does erupt, what can you expect or what do we expect to happen when that does? Right, so uh, if you've looked at videos of say, Iceland or um, Hawaii erupting, it's that similar type of volcano. So there, one, it's under a lot of pressure um, and two, it, it doesn't have the same explosive mechanism as say the Cascades do. So when it goes off, uh, we've only, in the history of oceanography, we've only been to, even though there's thousands and thousands of volcanoes underwater, we've only seen two or three erupt live uh, with a robotic vehicle because um, they're underwater. You don't know they're there. They don't explode out of the surface usually. And so they're going off all the time, but um, you know we just don't see them because they're a mile, two miles down, something like that. So, and being that far down and the type of volcano that they are, that's not really going to give any indications at the surface. You're not going to notice anything or see any disruption on that. No, no, no. And is there any danger of this volcano for people on, on the mainland, essentially? No, I get a lot of questions about that. And this is, um, it's, you know, uh, I'm hoping that someday we can be out there when it, we, with it erupts when, with a robotic vehicle because they're not very explosive. They're not... Um, it's not shallow, it's not in shallow water. So that's that's the problem is we don't, unless you have instruments sitting out there on a cable, you don't know it's gonna erupt. And talking about that with this, these instruments that are out there and this ability to monitor this with so many different, in, in so many different ways, you know, uh, looking at the prediction, the and I realize it's a prediction, there's nothing certain, but the prediction is that it could erupt here in 2025. What are the different factors and things that you look at to give that kind of an indication? So we have, um, it's one of the, probably the best studied underwater volcano in the world. So we have data from, it erupted in 1998, 2011, and again in 2015. And thanks to Bill, we had pressure sensors out there. Um, so what happens is as a volcano, you can imagine it, you're pumping more and more melt into the summit of the volcano and it rises. And pretty soon there's so much under pressure from the melt that it cracks open and that's when you have an eruption. And so the triggers that we know from looking at the prior eruptions, particularly 2015, um, on April 24th, there was over 8,000 earthquakes. And you'll never figure, they're, they're small, you don't feel them from shore. So in 24 hours, there was 8,000 earthquakes, the seafloor fell seven feet. Uh, and there was also acoustic events where we could actually hear on the cable uh, thousands and thousands of explosions as the uh, lava erupted onto the seafloor. Wow, and that's back then. So now with the technology that you have here in 2025, will you be able to better monitor that or even potentially get video of this eruption as it happens? Uh, so, so the great question. So the nice part about that is we had the, the cable was installed in 2014. So we had all that live data streaming in, in 2015. Uh, and one of the cool things for me that um, when, when the volcano is under this critical stress, the lunar tides actually impact the earthquakes. And so right before an eruption, you'll see it's, it's, there's more and more earthquakes when there's low pressure, right? So it's this really interesting system. So we have that, um, and we know every time that, in the three times we have when the seafloor has risen about three and a half meters, that's when it's at this critical place and it's gonna erupt. And so we're, we're already past the 1998, 2011, and 2015 place that rise height, and so it's it's getting close. But we haven't reached, uh, in 2015, there was over 2,000 earthquakes in a day for several, for about two and a half months before it erupted, and we haven't reached that critical place yet. But we have reached the critical stress where you can see a one-on-one -on -one correlation with lunar tides. Okay, so you can see that. I do think that's really, even with that deep of water, even a mile deep, that still yeah. those lunar tides change that, that pressure that much. Yeah, no, it's pretty amazing, so.
Um, so that will be the big indication then for you if if it compares, obviously, to previous uh, eruptions, is when you see all of those earthquakes happen, and it could be weeks to months ahead of time, but that's when you'll know that you're in that critical stage right before an eruption. That's correct. And the other thing that we're noticing is we have instruments that are, the, there's high temperature vents that are over, these underwater hot springs that are over 700 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, they're boiling. And the temperatures have been increasing in some of those over time. So again, it's, it's showing us that the, the seafloor, the under part of, underground part of the seafloor is heating up. And we also see venting where we've never seen it before. So clearly uh, the system is um, dynamic and uh, approaching that place. Yeah, I hope we're out there, but we'll see. Yeah, is it just something where you have to be timed just right to have the underwater vehicle out there? Yeah, so we do a, uh, every year we go out with a global class research ship uh, for 35 to 45 days and turn out instruments that are, they get biofouled. And so we usually recover on order 100 instruments and put them back down, including HD cameras. Um, we have, actually have a DNA sensor out there, a sampler. Um, and so, yeah, that'll be August, September. Uh, we were eyeing it last summer, but it wasn't quite close enough. So we'll see. We'll see. So knock on wood, maybe, yeah, yeah <laughs> August, we have September. A, a camera out there that streams. Uh, high definition video live on one of these hot springs uh, three times a day and um, year round. So you can sit in your living room and watch one of the most amazing places on earth. Yeah. I love As that. And yeah. Yeah. And you said that this is all public data. This is all accessible for everyone mm -hmm. that you can go onto the website and do that. And we'll let everybody know that site uh, really quick, just uh, talking about the bio, you know, the biology out there. Um, you mentioned some of the unique things that you get to see because this is on a volcano. And I know there's, specific forms of life that live, you know, at these underwater points on at these underwater volcanoes. And so monitoring that, have you been able to come up with any breakthroughs or anything, you know, unique that hasn't been seen before because of all this equipment there? Yeah, um, well, certainly the whole activity of the, one of the reasons we have so many instruments out there is to look at the connections between volcanoes and life, right? And so certainly the biological, we're interested in how the biological communities change over time. Um, some of the organisms I've seen are, you know, people discover new organisms almost every time they look at these new, with new genetic information. Uh, so, um, yeah, definitely looking at how, looking how, because we have 24, sometimes 24 seven video of these systems, you can look at how the biological um, animal communities change over time, depending on how the other is. One, uh, oops, sorry, just had to adjust my microphone there, uh, live in the newsroom. Um, I guess my, my final question, because all of this is so interesting, we could, I could talk to you for an hour about any one of these different subjects, but I know we don't have that much time. Um, the final question that I know a lot of people are going to ask, and this just has to do with the volcano side of things and seeing this, when this does erupt, you know, we've got the different plates and sometimes interconnectivity there. When this erupts, could this have any effect on the volcanoes, say, in the Cascadia? No, there will be. They're so far apart, uh, pretty much different system. So, cool. yeah. I, I will say one really quick thing is one of the discoveries we made in 2011, so 2015, when the volcano erupts, it puts out a lot of carbon dioxide, and the organisms in the seafloor, microorganisms, it's like a, a red tide. They just explode, and you see billions of microbes streaming from the seafloor. And that, wow. that was one of the first ones to film it live um, in 2011. Or, yeah, 2011, then again, 2015. So it's just in, very rarely in my life I've been to sea for 40 years have I ever had my mouth just like, wow, this is so amazing. And so it was such a, a great experience to be able to stream that live to anybody in the world at the time. So hopefully we'll see that again. That's so cool. Yeah, and just exciting, you know, learning this and, and having that technology there and having this available for everybody to learn from it. Um, going, uh, what you mentioned earlier, you know, this... This is something that people can see. So these previous ones were live streamed. There's a live stream that happens. Where can people go to check all of this out? I can give you a link. Um, if you go to the oceanobservatories.org site or Interactive Oceans uh, um, at the UW site, uh, we stream it. It's live there. So, all right. I can great. See, uh, link a few. Yeah, that helps. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, oceanobservatories.org. Uh, and there's a, a button there for HD imagery on the volcano. Fantastic. Well, um, Deb, thank you very much for having some time to talk to us about this. It's been great to talk with you. Yeah, yeah, you too. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll we'll talk some more here throughout the year once we start hearing, uh, hearing about some more earthquakes and uh, some excitement going on there and timed for August, September. That's what, uh, that's what we're going yep. for. Okay.
All right. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Deb. And for everybody watching too, this is Fox 12 Now. So we are live streaming here. You know, we cover a wide range of topics and we have been talking about Axial Seamount. There is another interview you can find on the Fox 12 Oregon YouTube channel about that. Uh, talking to a professor from Western Washington University. Coming up next week, I'm going to talk to uh, two of the people who are behind the study with that prediction. So they're going to be joining us uh, next week. So you can, again, find all those on the YouTube channel. You can go to kptv.com or the Fox 12 Now tab or the Fox 12 Oregon app. If there are questions you have that didn't get answered, feel free to email them those to me, fox12now at kptv.com, and we'll see if we can get those answered for you. But thanks for joining us. Once again, I am Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.